Hey garden friends, today I'm gonna to work on digging up a few iris. I have some in this section that are repeats that I need to get out, divide. I could put them elsewhere, give them away, what have you. I will be careful of things I wanna keep in here, but there's not too much. This is, I've just let go actually this summer. Everything else carried the show, so it was no big deal that um, I really didn't do much in here. I did plant some of my salvia that I started from seed over there. My um, limelight hydrangea, some of the weaker stems is flopping from that rain we had. I've seen people actually use a leaf blower to blow the moisture off. I was hoping the warmth today would help to dry them out enough that they would go back up. I may just have to come in and stake them up. But that is that. But here's the salvia. And I have a little bit of Sweet Williams here. And I have some volunteer hardy geraniums I don't really want in here. So I'm gonna pull those out too. But first off, I've gotta be very careful of the tubing here for the drips. I have cut through it before accidentally. I do have um, volunteer strawberries here too, but that I can just dig through. I just let them run as a ground cover and I enjoy their fruit along with the robins and other birds. But you see how easy I just stuck the shovel down in there. I'm gonna pull out the strawberries attached themselves to it, the leaves, but I want to shake off the dirt. I want to, don't want to take all the dirt away with it. Oh, those strawberries are very intertwined in there. Okay, did I get all the tubers? No, there's a piece of the tuber right there. So, one tuber. Now I will look at my video where I did of all the irises to see what color this was. I think this was a burgundy one. And then I will mark the leaves and if I'm gonna give it away, but if I'm not gonna give it away, I'll just put it on the back hillside and let it come up. And then I'll know when it blooms. But if somebody wanted to know what color it was, if I gave it to them, then that's why I would mark the leaves. So, or if I was gonna store it for a bit before replanting it. So we are gonna dig up this one. I realized when I reviewed my footage that my other uh, dig ups was, they were obscured. So you really couldn't see how I did it if you really wanted to know. And I'm trying to do this early enough in the morning that the noise from the construction behind us hasn't started yet. So uh, probably they're gonna start pretty quick. And it's pretty noisy. They've been jackhammering concrete. So here is my iris and you notice it's kind of got an open spot in the center and it's growing around that so i am going to get my garden fork you could do this with a shovel and i'm gonna dig up now it just popped loose from the other one you can dig up the whole thing and then divide individually or you could just do it this way it doesn't matter because it will split right where it's connected to the mother easily so you see that piece of rhizome there? So that's gorgeous, gorgeous rhizome. So this part, see it even has, I would have split this off because it looks kind of old and gnarly, but it's got new growth. Little rhizomes coming off of it. Let me see if I can get this up to you so you can see that well. See it has little rhizomes coming off of it. So what I do now is I take my garden scissors or shears. I'm gonna dig up the rest of this because I didn't want it right here. But I'm just gonna take off the leaves. You do not have to cut them in any particular angle. Water is not gonna sit on top of them or et cetera, or do anything. Now you do this, one of the reasons is when you replant, then it will um, not topple over because it's gonna be very shallow. And also you go ahead and trim back some of the roots. It doesn't hurt it. And that will encourage you to put out new roots into your new planting area. Now I could split this off more, or I can plant it all as one piece. And I'm gonna plant it all in one piece. And then also I'm gonna dig up some of this to give to a garden friend. And that's coming up in a future video. And you're gonna love it. 
Now, behind this one is an echinacea that reseeded itself. And I will dig that up and put that somewhere else because I don't want that in here either. Now this one split off as I was pulling it up and that's fine. It's not gonna hurt anything. So this, there's two rhizomes here now and this one has little shoots coming off of it. So this is a good one. This is a nice big healthy fat rhizome, rhizome, however you pronounce it. And there we go. Now I'm gonna write on it. So this is the lavender by Backbench. <laughs> That's how I, I don't know the name of this one. So lavender. Back. That way, if she wants to look at my video on my iris tour, she'll see which one it is. The black back garden. It's also my secret garden, but I'll just put back garden. So there we go. The Sharpie is getting weak, weak, weak. So here's another one. Here's one. This one had the stock on it, which I will cut down, and cut the leaf. And this will go into the collection to go to someone else, and or I could replant in other areas, which is entirely possible. I'll show you how I replant next. Let me get this part up. Boy, the roots reached over. This is where the water was, so it was reaching over towards that water. So that's a nice rhizome too. Now, the ones I'm not gonna plant immediately, I'm gonna lay right here so I know where they came from. Oh, and here's a rhizome, it's got little babies on it, so I could plant that somewhere too. So there we go, there's that part. And I will come back and dig up this echinacea in a minute. Okay, so this is the one I'm saving for my garden friend. And this one, can be just set aside. And this one, I'm gonna plant somewhere where I want another iris. And I'll show you how I do that. Sometimes I wonder if I'm the only person who has to redo a video three times. I videoed replanting the iris for you. And when I viewed it, I was mostly off camera. So one more time, you know, as soon as I said that about having to redo the video and plant again for you. UPS showed up with my um, purchases from Shriners Iris Gardens just a few weeks ago. I hit their sale, into the season sale. I failed to order when I should have to get all the varieties I wanted, but the sale was great. I got four new ones. The one um, I got that I absolutely wanted for sure was Fall Fiesta. And this one is a most beautiful orange, very fall colors, so great. And then, this one doesn't have a picture on it, but I'll put a picture up, I'll grab it from their site. Um, and then, Discovered Treasure. This is a real pretty pink and lavender one, creamy. And this one, Champagne and Strawberries, looks a lot like my Strawberry Sorbet. Um, and I don't have this one, but I love that one so much. And then Polite Applause. This one, um, I don't remember. So I'll, I'll look it up on their site and show you a picture of it too. But so, they're already trimmed back. They trim them even shorter than I do, but that works great. And we'll find a really good spot with these that I know gets good sun that my irises do excellently in. Now, some of them I had to dig up in my garden. I noticed they didn't increase much. They didn't do well. And I think they got a little bit too much shade and a little bit too much water. So those ones I dug up, I have been placing elsewhere in my garden that I know gets a lot more sun and a lot more warmth. Um, and these ones also, I'm gonna find primo spots for that I can really enjoy them this coming season. And I know they'll put on a lot more. Uh, increase, so make more rhizomes, rhizomes, however you want to pronounce it, um, in the garden. So when I divide them, I can have more elsewhere. So it takes me uh, between two and three years before I have to divide them here. I'm in zone 8A, but I'm in the mountains. So I have a short growing season. And because of the tall evergreens around me, I struggle to get a, a lot of direct sun. The most direct sun I get is in the height of summer 
and then it starts to go lower in the sky and behind the tall evergreens you may or may not be able to see around me. And if you've watched my videos very often, you will see the tall trees behind me. So I'm gonna scout out places for these and then there's also a couple more I wanna dig up and plant in other spots. So just so you see how I plant my new or divided irises. So this is the spot that I'm gonna plant probably my fall fiesta and um, I'm not sure what other one. I have others in here, but you see how this one over here is just real healthy. I need to divide it and will. That's my boysenberry, oh no, huckleberry fudge. I love that thing, such a pretty brown color. Very unusual and um, it never fails to delight me. But, so I know right in here, this area gets good sun. Now, back up against the wall, those ones didn't do as well. And that one back there, I am gonna dig up. And I think, you know, the shade from the plants behind that wall and the being too close to the wall where gophers ran a tunnel through along that wall this last winter. So that one will get moved. I already moved this one a little bit more forward. And this one, I think I'm gonna put Fall Fiesta right here. Now this foxglove right here, I was debating on leaving it there, but it's right at the front of the border and it will get really tall. So I am gonna move it. And um, if it doesn't make it fine, it was a volunteer. I have volunteers all over. I love my foxgloves in spring, but um, I don't want it there. So I am going to get my tool to dig. And let's see, which one, where's my Fall Fiesta? So this is Fall Fiesta, right there. I think I'll put it there and it should do fantastic. That foxglove so it's not in the camera. Let me go ahead and do that really quick. And I'll get in here and I will dig this up. I don't know what color it is. Like I said, I think it was a volunteer, but it's a good healthy size. Let's see. Probably because it's right there on the hose. So shake the dirt off of it. Oh, there was an iris right there. See, I didn't even know that. It was obscuring that. So that's good that I got it up because then that iris can continue to get sun and put on new growth. Okay, I'm going to lay that up here. I'll replant that somewhere else. And there's a rock in here. Hopefully nothing is obscuring this area. But I'm just loosening the soil. And my soil, wow, there is an iris right here already. That really was obscured. Hmm. I'll move this one. And I'll put it somewhere else. Because I want my fall fiesta to be right here where I can really keep an eye on it. So weeds. So, okay. So right here. Now, if I had soil that did not drain well, I would create a hill to plant this in like this. So it would sit above all the soil around it. Now I don't have problems with that, but I'm still going to go ahead and do the hill because this, this bed now gets irrigation and that'll keep it from getting too moist in the summer. So I'm going to leave the tag on it and it should be fine. When I've left the tags on before, they've not had any issues because the new growth will come up around that. Now, if you live in a hotter area, then you want to kind of cover, barely cover the back of the rhizome and that protects it from getting scorched. But for me, because right now we're in late fall, or not late fall, but late summer, going into fall, I want the rhizome to absorb warmth from the sun and so I'm gonna leave it showing just a tiny bit. So there we go. My iris planted on a little hill so it has good drainage during the winter. Alrighty, there you go. Planting Iris 101. So right here is the area I cleared out a bunch of other plants, the daisies, and I don't have an iris here. So I have some over here that I think are a color that I wanted to remove anyways, but I don't need very deep. So I'm just gonna pull this back 
so that I can fit the roots in there. And then I'm going to just cover, whoops, my little aster. I'm going to cover the roots and just sink it down in there. So by topping it, the leaves, it won't pull it out of the soil because it's very shallow. And I cover the, the backs barely. Now, because this is, gets a hot sun area, I don't want them to scorch. But as it gets watered in, they may get exposed, and that's fine. They don't mind that. In fact, I've had them um, be tossed on top of the soil and then go ahead and bloom and be just fine. So it works either way. You don't have to be too fussy with them. No. So that, my garden friends, is how I dig up, divide, and replant my irises on a beautiful September day. Now, basically, let me straighten this up for you. Basically, I could have done this in late July because mine bloomed in early June and you can dig them up and divide them six weeks after the bloom. So August, I could have done this. It's just, I'm just now getting to it here in September, but September is usually the traditional month for many people to dig, divide and transplant their irises, their bearded irises. and. Um, and prepare for a beautiful, beautiful spring. If you wanna see how mine looked, this year was a stellar year for them. Go back and I'll link it below in the description box below. Go back and see my iris garden tour because it was really beautiful this year. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did, share it with your friends and come on back for the next video of gardening at Flower Patch Farmhouse in the mountains of Northern California.